Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, students and friends. Uh, I'm really happy to open this session of the conference dedicated to Jean-Paul Sartre's Réflexion sur la question juive, 70 years after anti-Semitism, race and gender. Since this is the only session of the conference that takes place at the Van Leer Institute in Jerusalem, it is a special honor and a special pleasure for me to express my warmest feelings to Professor Gabriel Motzkin, who is soon retiring from heading the Van Leer Institute. And I also would like to greet And I would also like to greet Professor Shai Lavi, the Institute Future Director. I wish him all good luck and look forward to the continuation of the long and fertile tradition of cooperation between the Hebrew University and Van Leer Institute. This is the fifth session of the conference and its topic is Jews and Antisemites today. We have two speakers, Michal Gouvrin from Tel Aviv University and Eva Ilus from the Hebrew University. I would like to thank you both already now, not only for the interesting talk you are about to give us, but also for your willingness to step in at the last moment request and to be here with us instead of Alain Finkelkrot, who had to cancel his visit for personal health problems. So, thank you. Our first speaker is Michal Gouvrin. Michal Gouvrin is a writer, poet, and stage director. She has a doctorate in contemporary sacred theater from the University of Paris. Gouvrin is a pioneer of the new Jewish stream in Israeli literature and theater. She has published 11 books, poetry, novels, and essays that have garnered many prizes in Israel and abroad. At the Van Leer Jerusalem Institute from 2012 to 2015, Gouvrin headed the multidisciplinary memory transmission and fiction research group. Michal Gouvrin teaches at Tel Aviv University. She was selected by Salon du Livre de Paris as one of 30 writers who left a mark on world literature, and she's a chevalier of the French Order des Arts et des Lettres. So, Michal, please. Um, thank you, Yoya, for the introduction. I'm, uh, thank you, Emanuela, for the invitation and the trust. Uh, uh, welcome to all the participants and a special uh, hello to Gabi Motzkin and my gratitude for the warm, incredible uh, hothouse I had here for and the whole uh, team uh, for so many years. Uh, it was uh, a unique experience. Um, I've titled my, um, my, my lecture uh, in a title uh, in Hebrew, which is intransla intranslatable. And the intranslatability maybe would be part of my talk. In Hebrew, I would call, name the, uh, uh, my talk, Ha'achrayut al Ha'achirut. In English, it would sound much less striking, and it will be the responsibility of otherness. And I'll, if I'll have time, I'll come to the, etymolo to the very rich and telling uh, Hebrew etymo etymology on, on that uh, uh, expression. Um, I've chosen as a motto to my talk uh, a line from Tzvetayeva's 1924 poem, uh, The Poem of the End, which was written in Czech, uh, in, uh, in Prague. In that uh, poem, Atzvetayeva takes on herself as a poetess the mythical identity of the Jew, the Paria. The line is, in this most Christian of all worlds, the poets are Yids, a pejorative uh, name of Jew in the Russian expression, of course. Paul Celan chooses that line as a motto to his own uh, poem, and with the Book of Tarusa from 1962. The title that bears the name of the Gulag where Tzvetaeva perished. The poem converses with Mandelstam and with the whole galaxy of poets, the others, that their fate crosses like uh, the Milky Way, the middle of the 20th century, all of them exiles, parias, 
where their speech uh, naked uh, is uh, a sighing and being sung. In and the book and with the book of Tarusa, uh, Tselan also in a very uncunning way uh, foresees and foretells the jump into the Seine and to his death. Thinking about uh, uh, the topic, I um, decided that I'll share with you uh, as Sartre speaks about when is the first time that a person inquires uh, anti-Semitism, very briefly two moments where I, as a born Israeli uh, who was not aware of anti-Semitism, inquired uh, or experienced uh, uh, anti-Semitism. The first time was when I arrived as a very young, 21 years old student in the beginning of the 70s to Paris to my studies. Uh, my French was so-so. I was very happy to see that at the Place de l'Opéra uh, there was a booth that sold the Ma'ariv. So I bought a uh, newspaper and here I went to the Metro and read my paper until someone told me, Mademoiselle, on a craché sur votre veste. And Mademoiselle, they have uh, spitted on your jacket. I was trembling. That was the first time I felt that something that I did uh, marked me. Uh, the second time was at 2001. I w went to, and I jump other anecdotes, I went to uh, writer's conference in uh, Melbourne and on the way they asked me also to participate in a, in a writer's, small writer's conference uh, uh, festival in Tasmania, in Hobart. Uh, before my arrival, I learned that uh, at, that was in July 2001, I precise because it was a month before the Durban conference. On the, before arriving, I was told that my participation was cancelled by the organizers as a protest. Uh, then there was a journalist who discovered that and wrote the j'accuse. Then the state governor imposed it back on them. I said, I don't want to go in these uh, uh, circumstances. And they told me, but the Jewish community waits for you. I arrived, the Jewish community of Hobart is 30 people. They, <laughs> They were waiting. They, were, they didn't leave me the whole time. They just went with me from one place to the other. Those 30 people, my, uh, uh, and uh, my uh, lecture was the only one that was on a double session, so the organizers could avoid it. They avoided me during the whole festival. They looked to the other side. The protest was against uh, killing children in the Middle East. Uh, it was the year when uh, Muhammad uh, Duras affair came out. But also, I just came after uh, the killing at the Dolphinarium. Uh, the session was about playing with words. I uh, asked to speak the last and f felt for the first time that I have to, to uh, face anti-Semitism as I never thought I would have to. Uh, the title, of the, uh, the title of our session is Jews and Anti-Semites Today. I will not uh, 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 offer a historical or sociological uh, 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 thought, but from my point of view of a writer and theater director, I'll, I'll visit uh, a kind of, I would say, contemporary visit at the myth of anti-Semitism and its ongoing uh, flexible changing sensibility. Uh, I will do it, uh, as we've heard already in the conference, uh, not through le regard de l'autre, but through the self-gaze. Uh, it's a school that I was trained by uh, with Levinas uh, as part of uh, the School of Orsay. I just would mention that uh, preparing to it, I went and looked back at the biography of Jacob Gordin, uh, that at the same year that uh, uh, Sartre uh, published uh, Reflexion sur la question juive, uh, he, out of the resistance juive uh, during the war, founded the Orsay School as a, rec as, as a claim for Jewish identity, uh, uh, totally 
opposite to the portrait of the resistant that uh, Sartre does in his book. And uh, part of my ongoing uh, discussions with Derrida during, uh, during the years and his ongoing uh, uh, debate with the question and, and, and his uh, confession that th this book of Sartre was a main influence on him. Um, but the difference from the French school, from what I would uh, uh, suggest, would be uh, to quote the quote that uh, Bruno uh, Chou uh, Chouet uh, 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 quoted from Lanzmann last night about his uh, uh, excitement of, of discovering in Mea Sharim the herring eaters. Um, I must confess that I had the pleasure of eating herring through my childhood in a very special kind of Melave Malka of a out of Shabbat ceremony uh, in a socialist uh, secular uh, um, milieu in Tel Aviv of my parents and my uncle uh, that was a kind of a post-Hasidic, neo-Hasidic uh, socialist uh, and pioneering milieu. And all of that, I think, will reverberate through my talk, uh, the way of claiming an identity through the, uh, uh, across the borders and not in the stereotypes that uh, Sartre sometimes uh, uses or the diasporic images. To say that my talk will be from the gaze of the, uh, the person who has a country, the one that has a land and the responsibility from that. It would be 70 years after the Holocaust and from a female point of view. I read again with uh, joy uh, uh, Sartre's book, but especially, I would say, my greatest pleasure was from the first section, his uh, archetypal um, uh, portrait of the anti-Semite with its theological dimension, manichaeistic, and with a refined psychological understanding, I would say that from the writer's point of view, this is the most successful uh, character of the book, much more successful and complex than that of the Indo-Authentic Jew. Uh, without stating it openly, I think that in this chapter, uh, Sartre uh, uh, suggests a very delicate and uh, refined understanding also to Nazism and the monolithic quality of that group, uh, their holding of the ground, of the land, not the, the French land, but the Erde, and, and its complicated place in the German uh, uh, identity, uh, as uh, Derrida could show in his seminar about Kant, and or the Jew, and uh, uh, and the complexity of, uh, uh, of the fear and the hate and the jealousy to the Jew. He, uh, I think, analyzes in a very minute way the need for a sacrifice for the paria, the sacred and the banned, and the fear uh, which is uh, uh, attached to the fear of the sacrifice, of the sacrifice revenge. And when you look at uh, uh, Hitler's or Gabel's uh, uh, speeches from uh, late in 45, March 45, what really uh, suff uh, suffused in their the talks is the fear from the Jewish vengeance, which at that time justifies the last phase of the Holocaust. Uh, it might be that uh, the intense uh, preoccupation of the couples, uh, uh, Sartre and Simone de Beauvoir, uh, on the, uh, at the figure of um, Le Marquis de Sade, remind you of uh, Beauvoir's book, uh, uh, Faut-il brûler Sade, which is going to be published a few years later, gives depth to the understanding of the sadistic uh, dimension of anti-Semitism and its metaphysical dimension. And also, I would say, the climate, the cultural climate in Paris at that time, when uh, Artaud's Le Mal, was very much present with, with its uh, uh, specu uh, um, specific uh, metaphysical dimension. I think that all of that is a, uh, is a very powerful tool 
to face, for example, uh, uh, and that's, I think, part of the relevance of, of Sartre's book, it's, it, it might help us to, to face what I would call uh, uh, the genius of evil as it's presented, for example, for me at the Museum of Auschwitz, which for me uh, uh, offers the visitor le jouissance sadique et la fascination. It's a place that arouses sadistic uh, uh, pleasure, showing the, uh, the glory and the genius of evil. There are no, t uh, no testimonies uh, or presence of the inmates, and uh, there is uh, uh, an awe before in front of the paria and the sacrifice. And I think that all of that, even before the uh, avant la lettre, is already in the sensitivity of Sartre. Um, but my pleasure from reading that chapter was not, or my, my uh, interest this time, was not only because of the uh, accurate of the portrait of the anti-Semite, but uh, that I discovered that many of the features attributed to the anti-Semite by Sartre are very intimately known to me by the Jewish self-definition. So in a way, one can say that there is a reversal, that the same features that sometimes are attributed to the anti-Semite by Sartre can be seen, can be found as part of the self-definition of the Jew in the Jewish tradition. The position of the Jewish people in front of the other, of the external, of the one who is not part of us. In a more frightening way, some of those characteristics are known as characteristics of the settler, if not of the Israeli. And both, uh, and, and this issue is uh, part of what I would call the struggle on the role of the, sa of the sacrifice, the victim, and the paria. In the, uh, in, the mo in, the, uh, in the contemporary uh, culture. I've written about it. Uh, I mean, I won't have time to go into it, but uh, maybe in this context, it's interesting to mention that uh, an, a long essay on that was published by Claude Lanzmann at Le Temps Modern, uh, dealing with uh, uh, what I called uh, uh, the story war uh, and thoughts about the role of the victim and, and the martyr in the different positions. I think that we are part of uh, a struggle on that, uh, on the privilege of playing the role of the martyr and with all what comes to that through uh, uh, the definition of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the description of Sartre of the anti-Semite. But as I said, uh, Sartre touches also maybe intuitively a very much a way of self-definition, uh, especially in the portrait of the non-authentic Jew. Uh, one knows the, very st the story of Shlomo Karlibach that when he used to come to the campuses to sing and he would ask people, what is your religion? And people would say, and those who said, I'm a universal, he says, oh, these are the Jews. And or, uh, uh, then uh, and they know we, the way we know those, the Jews that cannot start the day without reading some calumnies in the newspaper because the, uh, uh, then he knows that he, uh, that, that he exists as a very uh, sardonic um, joke of uh, just after the, in, in the time of the liberation, the Jews went back to Poland and said, oh, finally, the, the Polish papers are, are, are uh, arguing against uh, uh, the kosher sl slaughtery. So people ask them, why, why, why is that such a good news? He says, huh, because the uh, world comes back to be normal. That's what they use, the, what they speak about. So, I mean, the hate of the other as a part of, of, the, of, of uh, uh, a paradoxical part of self-definition. Uh, but, uh, but I would not go into detail that, to that, but I would suggest that uh, what I once called in another uh, 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 study, uh, the case of the Jewish biography. The Jewish biography is a stereotyped collective biography in which either you are in 
that collective uh, 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 biography or you are out. And this is a biography which is written in advance. It's uh, uh, declared already uh, at the covenant with Abraham. And it's the core of it is separation, is being different, is coming out from being a, hum a universal uh, person and the chosenness, being chosen, is already a boundary. And that boundary goes throughout the Jewish tradition. So either you are in the boundary or you don't want to be it and you step out when you can and uh, you disappear uh, in uh, where there are no boundaries. Uh, uh, this is also, if we watch uh, the, ex the exodus from Egypt, uh, the, the coming, bringing out the nation out of slavery is also a great occasion for God to show his own show among the others and the need to be out there in the audience that the others will see that he is the savior. Just look at that chapter in, in, in Exodus and see how many times it says that they will know me as if that God is uh, not so sure of itself, secure of itself, and for the identity, the needs of, that, of the show, of the spectacle. And until the ongoing uh, uh, saying of the chosenness, like uh, for, uh, a nation that dwells solitary, or you have chosen us, or for he has not made us lie, uh, at the nations of the land and has not emplaced us like the families of the earth, for he has not assigned our portion like theirs, nor our lot like all their multitudes. The differentness, being different, is part of the own self-Jewish definition. And we know that the, the, the regard de l'autre is also there. For example, Bilam, uh, who wants to curse, and his definition of the nation becomes one of the most known blessings. So the regard, the, the regard from the outside is uh, complicated and what is calumny might sometimes become the best blessing. And this is a subject that I think one can uh, uh, make a whole symposium on that uh, uh, question. But uh, I would just mention that being a different, and I won't go, have time to go into the etymology where the, the, the other and the responsibility uh, are from the same root in Hebrew. And there is always also from the other, there is a space or time which differs and responsibility, achrai is the one who stands behind someone and takes responsibility on him. So there is always the separation and the distance that enables a gesture of choosing to be part, which is part of, of, of that complicated relationship, which is also what uh, 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 in Hebrew, in the in Hebrew et etymology, is also definition of chuka, of desire, of uh, chuka, mashak, neshika. These are all uh, uh, verbs that create uh, difference in order to uh, uh, go through it. I'll end my talk with the dimension, the erotic dimension of anti-Semitism. And in, in that, I would suggest that the Jew uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the um, uh, anti-Semite uh, anti uh, myth uh, places the role of a woman. Um, it's, again, from outside and inside, it starts by telling by, by coining the relationship be between God and the nation as a love, passionate relationship. Psalm uh, 132, get up, Lord, so as to go into your place of repose, which is Jerusalem, for the Eternal had made his choice in Zion. He desired it as his dwelling. This will be my place of repose, for, of repose forever. There I will dwell, for I lusted after her. God would be by imitatio Dei, the example for the passion mingled with jealousy, heated by other predators and their rage, their jealousy, mise on a beam of desire, God jealous of and for Jerusalem, Zion, the great seducer, and his possession out of reach. 
So the relationship of God and the nation projects on the erotic, sadistic, sometimes jealous uh, relationship uh, between the nations and Israel. Uh, one can go to uh, Ezekiel and his descriptions, which embedded the libertine literature. Uh, it's a kind of a, a forewriting of that, uh, of that relationship that we find in later novels. I'll end with uh, one anecdote from the Bible that can show how one takes responsibility of that equation between uh, uh, of, of being the woman and how close it is to anti-Semitism. And I refer to the book of Esther. I don't have time to read it, so I'll just summarize, and you are invited to go and look at chapter 1 <coughs> and in chapter 3. The way that Vashti, the queen, is banned is by Memuchan, who war, uh, warns Achashverosh that if he lets Vashti rebel, all the women of the kingdom will rebel against him. The one becomes all. He touches the paranoia of Achashverosh. Exactly the same formula he uses, Haman uses, sometimes uh, the uh, interpreter says it's the same person, uses when he warns Achashverosh against the Jews. If you let one Jew, Mordechai, rebel against you, all the Jews will be the traitors in all your kingdom because they are everywhere, like women. So we, teach, we touch here the paranoia of the other, which is out of reach, which is everywhere, and which is a threat. Maybe, maybe, fear, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe weak, but has secret power. Esther takes responsibility on the otherness when she comes to Achashverosh, and that is uh, a courageous act where she, in a way, helps him to go out of the fear, the paranoia, and the jealousy. To end my talk, I think that uh, questioning anti-Semitism today puts us without, with very open questions can be fresh and new, beyond the post-colonial questions. It's the question about sovereignty on the land, uh, if you can release it or not, what is sovereignty of a land? These are the questions about uh, uh, how would we uh, define the memory of the Shoah? Are we going to perpetuate, for me, the obscene way of making the Shoah a case of a martyrology, sacred martyrology? Or are we going to stress the human possibility in this dire condition to struggle for their own face from within are we going to dismantle le regard de l'autre, all the victims of the, of the, of the uh, Holocaust, in a way that each one of us can identify not with the suffering, but with the struggle for humanity? <coughs> the question is also about the stage of women in the world. And I think that all of that are coming together, and maybe the changes that are, maybe if we'll succeed in changing the memory of the Shoah. And if the condition of the woman would change, maybe that would help us to dismantle also the myth of, the, uh, the uh, 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 of anti-Semitism. And to end, I'll quote Jacques Derrida, that once he was here in Mishkanot uh, Shananim, kind of an intimate conference, and someone asked him, what is the future of anti-Semitism? And he says, it has a future. And it's like uh, this joke about the Jew who is, was always unemployed, and one day someone comes and he sees Moishele in the entrance of the, of the little town, and he says, why are you so happy? He says, I, I finally have a stable job. job. What is the job? I'm standing here, and when, when the Messiah will come, I'll run and, and, and tell everyone that he has arrived. So that's a stable job. And so, which means that we live, <laughs> so we live in the in-between, they live in the meanwhile, until he comes. And until he comes, I think that Sartre maybe gives us something of understanding how the ongoing invention of man, the responsibility, which doesn't exist at Levinas, the, the responsibility, the active responsibility, which comes from the Kabbalistic Hasidic tradition of your fate 
and of the cosmos can maybe carry us uh, facing reality and also by changing maybe that thing that will always be with us, the Jew and the anti-Semite. Thank you.